Thank you, President Peskin, and thank you for attempting to bring us all together. I think you said in your opening remarks um, that we've failed to bring both sides together here in San Francisco, and based on what I'm hearing and the responses I'm hearing back to some of my colleagues, I can't agree with you more on that. Um, this conflict has weighed heavily on my, I want to say one thing too, every single person on this board is an incredible human being who does not want harm to come to anyone. And I know that to be true of all my colleagues. And though some of my colleagues, like Supervisor Mandelman expressed himself, Supervisor Dorsey expressed his, Supervisor Melgar expressed her opinions, are all incredible human beings who do not want harm to come to anyone. I know that to be true. This conflict has weighed heavy on my heart since October 7th, and I've been beyond saddened to see the extreme stress it has brought to so many people I know and love. I've always said that my job here on this board, and you've heard me say it too many times probably, is to bring peace to situations. I've said it several times. I've invoked the St. Francis prayer. It guides me to try to be a channel of peace. Unfortunately, I just feel there's no way today with this resolution, amended or unamended, to not leave someone hurting or feeling misunderstood or unseen by whatever vote is taken or by whatever words are said as evident in this room right now. And for that, I truly am extremely sorrowful. There's not an aspect of the situation that doesn't horrify me on every level, from Hamas's actions to the, what's happening um, in discriminant bombing. There's so much about this situation that horrifies me, and I don't believe the resolution can strike the right notes and the right words to serve as an instrument for peace. I just don't. And I also think, you know, Supervisor Preston mentioned how many people came out, and I think it's in incredible to see what this has stirred in people. I know that many people in the Jewish community who didn't come out because of the trauma, and they haven't participated publicly because of the vitriol, and I don't think that can be ignored either. Since Hamas's attack on Israel, anti-Semitic attacks have increased by an astronomical 350% uh, alongside a staggering rise in anti-Arab and Islamophobic rhetoric. I don't believe this resolution will end the violence abroad, but what I do know and what I believe and what I'm witnessing right now is that it has fanned the flames of hatred here at home. What I also want to say, I will be a voice for women today. I, I, will, I will not. What happened on October 7th unleashed a flurry of hatred and an unfathomable number of deaths, not just in Israel and Gaza, but even here at home, when a six-year-old boy, Muslim boy was killed in a stabbing attack and three Palestinian American students were shot acts fueled by Islamophobic hate that are absolutely unacceptable. I truly believe these people would be alive and unharmed today had Hamas not broken the ceasefire on October 7th. I don't think I'll ever understand why some people think it's not okay to voice this truth. And if that wasn't enough, there have been horrifying reports of Hamas's weaponization of sexual violence against women, which should make any sentient being sick. There is nothing in this world that can justify such acts. We have heard the most horrific testimonies from both survivors and forensic specialists detailing how women and children were raped and how they were sexually violated. In a story by the New York Times, yesterday in committee, Supervisor Dorsey mentioned these attacks on women and members of the public shouted him down and called him a liar, which is really beyond frightening to me and which is obviously happening at this moment in time to me right now. Hundreds of journalists watched uncensored footage of the Hamas massacre, and I saw, as many of you did, a woman being dragged into a car by Hamas who had blood between her legs soaking through her pants. I am not going to stay silent on these issues, and these horrors cannot be allowed to fade. I will stand up for women and girls every time, no matter what threats may come my way. You cannot call for a ceasefire without calling for the surrender removal of Hamas and the return of all the hostages. I desperately want the violence in Gaza to stop. 
I want all babies and women and children in both Gaza and Israel to grow up safe, to love, and to be loved. The empathy and anxiety I feel for all those suffering is overwhelming, even those that even those that don't like what I'm saying. I have such empathy for what you're going through. And I want to believe that a ceasefire is possible. But I don't know how you have a ceasefire with a terrorist organization who has recently said that would commit October 7th over and over again if it could. They don't adhere to the rules of war based on what I have seen and read, and they are still holding babies, seniors, and women hostage. All those hostages must be released now. I want the Israeli hostages <coughs> to be free and for every Palestinian civilian to be protected. I want peace for both Palestinians and Israelis. I want Palestinian and, and Israeli children to be safe and to live a full life. But I won't stay silent about the threat I believe Hamas poses to the possibility of peace anywhere. And because of that, I cannot vote for a resolution that won't, at a minimum, call for the remo removal of Hamas.